I'm Raja Maples and our parent company Sinclair Broadcast Group and KHQA continue to work for you, keeping you informed on complex political issues facing our nation. We continue our Connect to Congress initiative with U.S. Representative Darren LaHood from Illinois 18th District. He joins us via satellite in Washington, D.C. Hello, Congressman LaHood. Hey, Raja, good to be with you and your viewers today. Thank you. Well, House Republican leaders released their plan to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act Monday night, and it's already been met with criticism by fellow Republicans in Congress and conservative groups. Do you support this plan, or are there more changes that you would like to see? Well, I think it's a good start, uh, but we have a long ways to go. Uh, we have an obligation to the American people to repeal and replace Obamacare. Uh, that's what we ran on, and now we have to do that. Uh, the, the bill that was introduced yesterday, I think, uh, is a good start. It does many of the things that we talked about, but we do have uh, a ways to go on a number of other things. Let's remember, if we do nothing, Raja, Obamacare will fail. It will collapse. The trajectory of it uh, can't withstand uh, the financial burden that it will put on the, uh, the American people. And so um, with that, we have to fix it. Um, and again, think about the premiums and how high they've gone up. In my district, in central and west central Illinois, premiums have gone up an average of 55% over the last six years. That is way too high. In addition, deductibles have gone up to four, five, six thousand dollars for individuals. So that has to change. Um, let me just say there's a couple things that I think have to be in the final plan. One is being able to keep uh, your kids on uh, their parents' insurance until 25 or 26 is a good thing. Uh, not discriminating against pre existing conditions uh, has to be a part of that. But, but the broader point of it is um, I don't think the federal government runs big things well, and we've seen that with Obamacare. And so now we have to figure out how we bring the private sector in, how we bring more competition in, and how we fix it. We clearly can do that. One of the main points of this is being able to go across state lines for insurance. We have to have that. Being able to pick an insurance plan. Remember, when Obamacare was passed, there were three, three things that were promised. You'll be able to keep your doctor. That didn't happen. You're going to have many more health care options. That is dwindled. And you're going to have low-cost health insurance. That hasn't happened. So we have to fix those things. I think this plan leads us in the right direction, but I think there's some tweaking that we can do. Let's also remember, this is an open um, and transparent process. Unlike Obamacare, that literally on Christmas Eve it was introduced in the House, uh, Nancy Pelosi talked about you're going to have to pass it first before you read it. Uh, that didn't happen. Um, uh, I mean, that happened, but that's not the right way to go about this. We introduced this bill yesterday. It's going to go through two or three different committees, the Energy and Commerce Committee and the Ways and Means Committee first. Next week it'll go to the Budget Committee, and then it'll go to the Rules Committee before it comes to the House floor open, transparent process for the American people to see. There'll be witnesses, there'll be testimony to figure out how we do this. That's what the American people want us to do. And at the end of this process, I'm hopeful uh, that in three weeks, we'll vote on the House floor on a final package that leads us in the right direction. Again, more private sector uh, involved with health care, more marketplace ideas in health care, more affordability, and more health care options. In many parts of my district, now you only have one health care option, one insurer to go to. Uh, that has to change. I think this is a step in the right direction. I look forward to um, being part of the process, working through the process, and uh, keeping the best interest of my district in mind as I do that. This week, the Trump administration released an updated travel ban. As far as execution, do you believe this time it will be more successful? Well, I think uh, they did a much better job in the rollout and the announcement of the travel ban. Remember, this. Um, this travel ban affects six countries. Uh, it changed uh, a little bit in the fact that Iraq is no longer in it, but we're talking about countries like Sudan, Somalia, Yemen, Libya, uh, Syria, and Iran. Countries that have had a history of terrorism, uh, countries that have had a history of circumventing our legal immigration process, uh, kind of hijacking that. So we always have to think about the national security of our citizens. What's best for the homeland? I think this travel ban does it. A couple things change in terms of the rollout. The starting date of this is um, in, in a week, so it's not an immediate start. So it, it gives an adjustment period for airports and uh, ICE and immigration folks to adjust to that. Secondly, um, it looks at these countries and says, you know, you have to have a better vetting process. So 
if you are a person that lives, a citizen of Somalia or a citizen of Yemen, and you want to come to the United States on, on a visa, well, you're going to have to go through a, a, a tougher vetting process. Because if you think about these countries, um, take Somalia, for instance, it is very, it's a lawless country. They don't have the ability to vet that individual. All we're saying is there is going to be an added inconvenience to go through that vetting process. But remember, it's for national security. We've had way too many incidences in this country, whether it's Orlando or San Bernardino or New York or many other places around the world where people have circumvented um, our, 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 our uh, infiltrated our immigration system. I think the travel ban is the right approach. I think it's been done differently. I think it will hold up to legal scrutiny this time. And frankly, again, always looking out for the safety of our citizens and the homeland. And as somebody that was a former federal terrorism prosecutor, I think this is the right approach to go. And uh, I'm, I'm happy the Trump administration did this in a different fashion this time. Last question, what is your take on Iraq being removed from the list? Well, I think there was careful consideration going into that uh, decision. Uh, remember, Iraq has cooperated uh, with us, um, their central government, when it comes to what we're doing in Mosul, in terms of what we're doing with ISIS, in terms of uh, the, our, our action plan to Syria. We have to eliminate um, ISIS, uh, and we're working on that, and the Iraqi government has helped, helped us in that process. The other part is our security apparatus. Um, uh, when, when they looked at this vetting process, I think they were satisfied that the vetting process within Iraq for people that want to come to the United States uh, is pretty good at this point. I think there's always a chance we go back and look at that, but I think they made the determination at this point that vetting process within Iraq um, is, is stable uh, and sufficient at this point. I would also um, uh, ask people to remember that Iraq and their central government, their military, uh, is in cooperation and partnership uh, with our military when it comes to what we're doing over there to fight terrorism, to go after ISIS, and to retake Mosul. And I think that was taken into consideration here also, and I think that's a positive move. Thank you, Congressman, for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks, Raja. Take care. You too.